guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about a product that is completely underrated. It does not get enough love on YouTube and that is Inglot. Inglot is an absolutely fantastic brand. Their shadows are second to none. I believe that they are better quality than MAC. You get more, uh, for, you get more value for money and the freedom system that they've created is absolutely gen genius. So what you can do is you can go into Inglot and you can buy a palette and they've got all different sizes. So they've got the big palettes like this. They've got smaller palettes like this. Um, they've got palettes that you can put two eyeshadows into. And what you can do with the freedom system is you can choose the shades that you want. So there's no wastage, you don't get left with a palette where there are two or three shades that you never tuck into. This way you can choose any shade you like, so it's absolutely brilliant. Their foundations are really good, their gel eyeliners are second to none, their lipsticks are good, um, their blushes are fantastic, all their powder products are highly, highly pigmented. Now I don't know why we don't see them on YouTube. But I do know that their PR and their marketing leaves a lot to be desired. I am on their mailing list. Um, they've got a loyalty program for makeup artists where you get 25% off. I, I'm often there buying products. I have never received a single email from them regarding new product launches or what's happening in the industry or what's happening with the brand. So I don't know what their marketing strategy is. but. It's really, really sad that they are not out there because they are such a fantastic brand. They're so versatile. When they started out in South Africa, they were very reasonably priced. But over the years, I've seen that the prices have crept up and they're now kind of on par with MAC. But I do consider them a superior brand to MAC. And it's just such a shame that they don't get more attention. Today, I thought I'd play around using a few of the shadows and products so that you can see what the quality is like and the kind of look that you can create. So keep on watching and it's coming up. So I'm going to start off using some of the concealer and this is for under eyes. I don't use it for under eyes. Um, I'm just going to dab on a little bit just to brighten up the center of the face before we put our foundation on. And then I'm just going to pat that in with a foundation brush. This is really nice. It's um, quite moisturizing, quite a nice thin consistency. It's not thick and it's not particularly cakey. And then I'm going to go in with their YSM foundation. YSM stands for Young Skin Foundation. I certainly don't have young skin, but I really like this because it's quite natural. It's not heavy. Um, they do have some HD foundations. They've got um, quite a few different kinds. Their range has kind of evolved over the years. I have tried one or two of the others, which I quite like, but I really like this for a very natural look. I'm going to blend it in with a sponge so that it's quite nice and sheer. But they really, they really do have a fantastic range. So now that that's all blended in, I'm going to put a little bit of powder on before we start with the rest of the makeup. They have a lovely range of powders. They've got mattifying powders. Um, I'm going to use some of this. It's called Stage and Studio Powder. So it's a, a yellow color, but you can't see that it's yellow when it's on the skin. And I'm just going to brush a little bit of that on. and. This is one of their better mattifying powders. I've tried a couple of them, um, but I'm on the eternal quest for a good mattifying powder. I have tried a lot of things. 
And I guess there's no one thing that is going to keep you matte the whole day. But this does pretty, a pretty good job of it. So now that we've got that on, I'm then going to go in with one of their contour powders. And it's this shade over here. And you need to be very, very careful with the contour powders and the blushes, in fact everything, because everything is so highly pigmented. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of that on a Real Techniques shaping brush, tap off the excess, and then I'm just going to do a tiny bit of contour on the cheekbone, just being careful to blend everything out so that it doesn't leave a stripe. We just want an illusion of depth there. And I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to apply it to the eyelids just as a nice base for our eyeshadow. It's very subtle. And then for eyeshadow, I thought today I would do a greenish, a neutral greenish color. So I'm taking my Freedom palette and I'm going to be using this green on the lid and then this grey green in the crease. So I'm going to take a flat eyeshadow brush and I'm just going to dip it into bright green and just tap that all over the lid. And this is a, a wonderful colour. It's so highly pigmented. Just, it's easy to apply. There's not a lot of fallout with these shadows. It really is lovely. All the foiled shadows are really good quality. Should I dab that in? Now that we've got that onto the lid, I'm going to take a crease blending brush and I'm going to go in to that grey green shade over there and we're just going to start applying this gently in layers because it is so pigmented just tap the excess off the brush and then I'm just going to start gently blending that into the crease and um, obviously you can add more but it's quite difficult to take away once you've Put it on and you've decided it's a bit burnt. But this is a lovely neutral shade and it just gives a little bit of definition. But as I say, all their mats, most of their mats, there have been some fails. They've brought out a few things that have not been up to par. But most of their mats are lovely for blending in the crease because they're quite buttery. make life so much easier. I'm going to go into the crease with a slightly darker shadow just to amp things up a little bit and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of this blue green over here just to add a little bit more definition and we're just going to go into the outer third of the crease depositing some on the mobile lid as well just to give a little bit of increased definition there This just enhances the grey green shade slightly. It's looking a little bit a little bit washed out. And then I'm going to go in with a fluffy blending brush 
And I'm just going to blend and make sure that there are no obvious lines there. Just blend that out. But this is a great combination. If you're tired of doing the neutral browns, it's sometimes nice just to add a little bit of colour. Colour never killed anyone. And then I'm going to go onto the lower lid with my pencil brush and I'm going to dab a little bit of the bright green just onto the outer third. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that deeper green just overlay that, just tapping the excess off the brush because it is highly pigmented. So I'm not going to do any harsh eye lining, just going to have a, a smudge of colour. Nothing too hectic. Now on to cheeks. So um, I'm going to be using one of the pots. They also um, have blushes and pots. And this is a lovely peachy shade. Again, very pigmented. So I'm dabbing my brush into the shade and then I'm going to tap with the excess and then just gently sweep it onto the cheeks up into the temples and just down and slightly onto the apples and this really does blend beautifully this is a nice soft brush that you don't end up with streaks. This really is such a lovely shade. I just really, I just love this brand so much. And then I'm going to go onto the upper lid with a little bit of the gel liner using tiny thin brush. Their gel liners are legendary. They are phenomenal. They stay put. They don't dry out in the tub. They really are a great find. I'm just going to go in close to the lashes. Just at the base of the lashes so you're not going to see any obvious line it's just going to give our eyelashes a little bit more definition and then I'm going to using one of the eyeshadows I'm going to go in with a little bit of a highlight so I'm going to be using this shadow here it's a champagne type shadow and we're just going to do a little bit of a highlight on top of the cheekbones. It's very subtle. And then just a little bit in the end of the nose. Then for lipstick, I'm going to be using one of their glosses. These have been discontinued, but these are phenomenal. And I'm so sad that, I mean, they were doing liquid lips better and longer than anyone else. And they have got a new range, which is also very good. I just love this color. It's a really nice color for winter. And these are really long lasting. Mm, this is a beautiful metallic. It's comfortable on the lips 
doesn't dry them out. I'm so sorry that they don't make these anymore. Uh, one thing I can say about Inglot is that um, they do some things really, really well and then they discontinue them. And I found that, for example, with their cream blushes, they don't seem to do those anymore. And with these, which is a real shame. And now I have to confess, I do not have an Inglot mascara. So I'm go I don't want to humiliate these products. So I'm going to apply my mascara off camera and I'll be back. And that guys is the finished look. I hope you found this video helpful. I will list all the products that I used in the description box. The other thing I wanted to mention about Inglot is that all their products are numbered. So their lipsticks will be 365, eyeshadow will be 21 AMC, uh, blusher could be 248. They don't name their products, they go by number. So I'll link, link everything in the description box below. Please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Ciao, ciao.